This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, January 26th. Great to have you with us. I'm Jeremy Jordan, teamed up with the guy who loves to see it, Jimmer Fredette, causing Gonzaga fans to have some PTSD. Yeah, look, in uh, that, um, well, it stems from a tweet yesterday. Sports Center obviously hopping on the Jimmer bandwagon, as everybody wants to do, <laughs> after Jimmer scores the 70 points uh, with Shanghai. They tweeted out Jimmer scores 70. And then this Gonzaga fan uh, tweeted out a reply to that, uh, which says, like uh, Dan. Yeah, Norge or Norg Dan says, as a longtime Gonzaga fan, this Jimmer tweet shakes me to my core. I must now leave work, go home, and lay down with two Ambien and a cold compress on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of blame Jimmer for Gonzaga's um, ascension, ascension because the, la- the last year BYU's in the Mountain West, BYU plays St. Mary's, by the way and uh, beat St. Mary's in, in the South Padre Island Classic. And then BYU plays Gonzaga in Denver and just crushes the Zags. And I think Gonzaga, it took like three or four years, but they were like, oh, we're going to have to raise our game if we're going to compete with BYU. Little did they know that was like arguably the best BYU team ever. So it was Jimmer third. ultimately responsible for the rise of yes. Gonzaga. Like, I'm kind of kidding, but I think <laughs> there was a shot across the bow where Mark Few and Gonzaga said, okay, If we're going to still dominate this league, we're going to have to do something different. BYU has not actually challenged Gonzaga for a regular season or even conference championship yet. Yes. Yet. Perhaps in the future. This isn't the year. What Gonzaga didn't realize was that Jimmer wasn't coming to the West Coast Conference. (laughs) (laughs) But it was such a crazy thing where they just got destroyed in that game. What makes that uh, that little line about me enjoying it even more appropriate was I was at that game. I was covering that game. So I was at Pepsi Center in Denver. I was like six rows behind John Stockton, who was there obviously supporting Gonzaga. Watch David get yeah, and, and his son. And so I actually got to witness that game and just the sheer joy of seeing Jimmer just dominate. Yeah, I, I would have been there. I was calling WNIT games here in Provo. It's the 10-year anniversary. Gonna, I win that one. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Michael Cooper actually coached USC and made me dance in front of his team. It was super rare. It was, it was uh, I don't know why. I couldn't say no to Michael Cooper. He the wanted Lakers? you to dance? He's like, Jerem, come out here. Okay. First of all, uh, did he call you Jerem, or are you just adding that in no, there because said, you want people probably to think said Michael Jerome. Cooper knows your name? He probably said Okay. Jerome. Yeah. I was calling the game. We knew each other for that moment. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, today's the 10-year anniversary of his Germanness and uh, BYU defeating San Diego State in Provo, that top 10 matchup, 43 points. Kevin Durant, the tweet. We have a top five Tuesday about it. I, I can't wait to watch that. Zach Wilson, speaking of top five, in Mel Kuyper's first mock draft, where in the top five is he, and is it a good fit? Game day for men's hoops, looking for a 14th win. Uh, and then game two tomorrow at Pepperdine. We'll talk with Mark Durant. And what Gonzaga's Mark Few says about the West Coast Conference tournament that could change things. But first, today's headlines. ESPN NFL draft guru. His name is Mel Kuyper. They like to call him Hair sometimes. Not Craig Thompson. The Hair Kuyper. Yes, but uh, Mel Kuyper. Uh, his first mock draft was released today. He has Zach Wilson going to the Atlanta Falcons at number four and being the second quarterback taken off the board after Trevor Lawrence, who obviously would go number one to Jacksonville. The first round of the NFL draft coming up on April 29th. Okay. Uh, Men's Hoop plays Pepperdine tomorrow in Malibu, assuming they can get out of the blizzard this morning. Game will be live on BYU TV. That's an announcement as of just moments ago. Uh, The game will be broadcast on BYU TV, 3 Eastern time. Of course, BYU Radio always. With that as well, your boy Jason Shepard, 2 Eastern with Cougar Pregame Live. So we will have the game tomorrow, 3 Eastern. Also, uh, some fresh bracketology out 13 minutes ago from Joe Lenardi. As BYU is a 9 seed still and 33rd on his line. So just one off of an 8 seed. So BYU kind of continues to climb. And great news that uh, we'll be uh, essentially broadcasting the game. Now, it will be other announcers, but yes. it's through BYU yep. TV. Yep, we're going to be carrying the game. You'll be able to see it, so yes. you don't need to worry yes. about not being able to see the game tomorrow or hear it. And, hey, how about this? You can sync them up. 
You can do that if you, you can like. Sync them up. You can, you can sync do up. That. Yeah, Greg and absolutely. Yes, absolutely. How about that? All right. Well, tomorrow the men's team. Today, women's basketball hitting the floor for a matinee matchup against Pacific. BYU has not played since the 14th of January. You can watch today's game on the BYU TV app for Eastern live from the Marriott Center. Yeah, good to have uh, one of those rescheduled games back after having four or five, uh, you know, postponed. Okay, men's volleyball remains number one in the ABCA coaches poll after week one. Why wouldn't they stay number one? Cougars didn't play, but they're preparing for the season opener next Thursday at home against UCLA on BYU TV. Can't wait for that one. Meanwhile, hey, women's volleyball season starts today at Portland. The Cougars will play one today, another tomorrow, three Eastern both days. And Santa Clara women's volleyball announces its matches with Cougars are postponed next week. So let it begin. Yes. Let it begin. Yeah, it's just part of what uh, what sports are right now. BYU men's indoor track and field currently ranked fourth in the nation. They are behind Arkansas, North Carolina A&T, and Tennessee. BYU North Carolina AT and T is is in the top five. It's not AT and T. A N T. No, it's AT and T. I thought. Is it just A N T? A N T. Agriculture and technology. I thought they were sponsored. It is not. I'm just kidding. It is not. (laughs) BYU has five different athletes ranked nationally in the top five. Connor Mance, number one in the 3,000. Caleb Witzkin, number one in the heptathlon. Dallin Vorkink, number two in the heptathlon. Keith Keith Vorkink's kid, question mark? I'm I'm going to assume there is a relation there. I do not know. Uh, Zach McCorder, number three in the pole vault. And Aiden Troutner, number four in the 3,000. Also, BYU women's indoor track and field ranked 24th nationally. Our our Olympic sports are awesome. They are awesome. They are awesome. It'd be a great fit in a Power 5 conference. Let's go. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, COVID has affected uh, everything in life, of course, uh, sports as well. Yet, we've been able to figure some things out and play safely. This has been good. We've been able to do this. It's good news. But as we look ahead to March and March Madness, which uh, will happen, conference tournaments are now being brought into question, at least according to one CBS Sports article, where 41 head coaches were polled nationally. 73% uh, said leagues should still hold the conference tournaments. 31 of the 32, as of now, will hold their conference tournaments. Gonzaga head coach Mark Few, the most powerful figure in the West Coast Conference, said the following. In every league, I think you need to ascertain where exactly your teams are in regard to qualifying for at-larges and what really is to be gained from the league tournament. The league makes money off them because of attendance, and there's certainly not going to be full attendance this year. Most of them aren't going to have anybody. So then it becomes, if there's no money to be made, then we need to look at, can we qualify? So-and-so needs a win. In our league, does St. Mary's need two more quad one wins to clinch their at-large bid? End quote. Jason, is there any reason not to have the West Coast Conference Tournament? Looks, I think there is certainly an argument to be made. I can completely understand where Mark Few is coming from. As, as long as teams will not be dinged for not playing in a conference tournament or if you say opt out, because that's certainly something that's on the table for a lot of these teams is you just can – Let's say, okay, you're still going to play the conference tournament. Well, we're going to choose to opt out. That happened with bowl games. Ab- yes, Utah absolutely. Utah chose to do that. If, as long as they are given assurances they will not be dinged for doing that, I can completely understand why a team like Gonzaga would see absolutely nothing to be gained for playing in the West Coast Conference Tournament. If, if, they're, if they're going to be able to stay as the number one team regardless, the only thing that could happen to them is negative. Right, and... And Mark didn't even address his team in that. It was more like St. Mary specifically. Yes. He didn't even address BYU because right now, obviously, Gonzaga is in the tourney. Duh. They're going to be the number one overall seed, it would appear. Uh, BYU is firmly in the tournament as an eight or nine seed at this point. Please get to a six, seven, uh, not, uh, 10, 11, or 12 right. at some point. But yeah, I, I agree with you um, that it's more about St. Mary's in this instance. And why does that matter? This league, the West Coast Conference, does not have football. It does not have the revenue of football. Therefore, what's the cash cow? It's men's hoops, and specifically it's Gonzaga. This league survives on uh, outside of other money-making opportunities in advertising. TV revenue, it's, it's contract with ESPN, and as of last year, CBS Sports Network as well, stadium, tertiary, and, and fourth rights, right? Uh, then the men's basketball NCAA tournament units. These units matter. The league and teams get money. The team... Uh, Gonzaga negotiated a couple years ago that each team that uh, 
gets into the tournament and has these units, uh, gets more of the money than they used to. It used to be split evenly. So this matters because Gonzaga is doing what every year? They're the only team in the last six years to go to at least the Sweet 16 every year. That's incredible. So they're getting at least two units. When I say a unit, it's like, you know, 100000 200000 bucks per game you play. So if you win, you get more. And this league needs that money. So if, if it's a three-bid league, that's a big deal for not just St. Mary's. It's a big deal for the league and the teams in the league. And uh, obviously money and a pandemic and all this stuff, it, it's tough to play, not have the gate from tickets, and do all the COVID testing. So I, this makes sense. I understand why there would be reasons not to do it. No tickets. And then does it benefit St. Mary's? I think it would benefit St. Mary's. Yet, and it, uh, could ben- it could very well benefit BYU as well. Yes. Uh, BYU might not need it. No. Um, but they could help their seating. Yes. Um, and, so, and so there's this question, too, the second angle to this. What if Gonzaga said, we're opting out of the tournament? We're just not going to play in it. Um, I don't know anything. I'm just throwing it out yeah, there. An- so our, our question of the day is this. Hypothetical question. If Gonzaga were to opt out of the West Coast Conference Tournament, would it be worth it for BYU to play in the tourney? What do you think? Well, so, uh, yes, I absolutely think it would be worth BYU to play in the I, tournament. I agree 100%. In, 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 if you have an opportunity to win a, a tourney championship and get an auto bid and not have to deal with Gonzaga at all, you're 100% going to take that. Yeah. Look, and, and the interesting no thing is that part of this discussion, the, the opt-out part, I think that's far more likely – then, and I think Mark Few realizes, and again, we, we're assuming a lot in what Mark Few said here. Yeah, but I, uh, just I, hypothetical. I, I think there's far more to opting out than him thinking that the WCC realistically would not have the tournament as a whole. The, the, the plan, many, uh, as of now, is to have the absolutely. tournament. Absolutely, and there's, you know what, and there's yeah. the other thing. Yes, you're not going to have, you know, you're not going to have the gate. And, and whatnot, but you you still have money coming in from TV rights for that. You have you know have the, the the ability to be able to have that broadcast, and that's still money coming. Is in. it a breach of contract if you don't? That's what I'm it? saying. And and What's when the you when you there? are so basketball focused and basketball heavy and dependent financially on on hoops that you can't turn away the opportunity for that money to come in. The way I look at it, if you're the top team, so Gonzaga. And if you're the bottom teams, and so whoever, Portland. yeah, Portland, you know, teams that have no chance of advancing on, now meaning granted, you can, winning the tournament, winning the winning the tournament, well, and the auto. And I understand everyone not named BYU and St. Mary's. I, I understand that, and you could years. always say, well, maybe we all we gotta do is get hot in Vegas, and then we'll see. But you have to realize there's money, there's a financial burden to go to the travel. There's the testing, testing yeah. every day, multiple times. So you're going to probably lose money by going. What is in it for these teams at the bottom? Was, why wouldn't they opt out just like Gonzaga would at the top? I was going to say, why would LMU show up? Yes. Um, especially this year. Um, you know, and maybe even Sandy. I don't know. Maybe these teams are like, no, we still want that experience for the student athletes or the athletic students, as we like to call them. It's going to be interesting. I think it could get chaotic. I think it could get weird. We, we have yet to see this, too, uh, or, or at least maybe we need to ask. Maybe there's an answer, and we don't know. What if not everyone plays the 16 games? What's going to happen in terms of seeding? Is it win percentage? Is it net? What is going to be the determiner of seeding at this point? Uh, for BYU, you look at, uh, hey, haven't won a conference tournament since 01. Yes, there would be an asterisk attached to it if Gonzaga's not in it, but I would be more than You're happy to participate in that tournament it. because all of a sudden the lid is off, the burden of Gonzaga is gone, and now you'd have a chance to win a conference tournament. It's just like a trophy with like a half of a, a guy or something. You're like, oh, yeah, that's the one that was the year Gonzaga. We'll still take play. it. But we'll, we'll see what happens. No actual indication of any of these things. Just kind of hypothetical tossing out there. But uh, guess what? It's January 26th. We're only, what, six weeks away from a little the over a month away. I mean, let's go. Okay, uh, really important is where BYU fits in the resume update and the bracketology. So let's get to that now. BYU drops to 29 in net. Still top 30. That's a good spot. And then other notables, Ken Palm still top 50. Uh, strength of record up to 12. That's incredible. And, of course, BYU top uh, 30 as well in KPR and Sagarin. The, the average seeding, by the way, in bracket matrix, 8.21. So BYU kind of leaning towards an 8 right now. ESPN Bracketology with Lenardi, we mentioned as of about 20 minutes ago, 9 seed. Fox Sports has an 8 seed. So 
BYU considered one of those 8-9 teams, top 32 to 35 right now, um, outside the top 25 at about 37 in the AP poll. So everyone kind of agrees on what BYU is now in terms of bracketology. Ken Palm's still the outlier because BYU's efficiency isn't as high as they want. But uh, what do you think of the resume right now? Look, BYU is trending in the right direction, and that's, that's all you can ask for. There's still plenty of games, we hope. We still hope that all of the games on Come the on. schedule are going to be played, but there's still plenty of games and opportunities for BYU to still increase its schedule or its strength of schedule and its resume and all that kind of stuff. You still have another game against St. Mary's. It's at home. You're going to have San Francisco at home. You're obviously still going to have another game against Gonzaga. So there's still opportunities, but they are trending in the right direction. That's all you can ask for right now. Absolutely. Okay. Question of the day is a hypothetical one. If Gonzaga were to opt out of the West Coast Conference Tournament, would it be worth it for BYU to still play in the tournament? Let's get to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Bay OSD, if Gonzaga opted out, that puts a lot of pressure on BYU to win the West Co- Conference Tournament. If they lose to a non-Gonzaga team, that could hurt their chances of getting into the NCAA Tournament as well as their seeding. If BYU wins, that would make them co-champions to a Ghost Zaga. <laughs> I would want BYU to play in it. I think at that point there won't be risk of BYU being bounced from the tournament. I think it'll just be a seeding conversation. Absolutely. If That's BYU, the hope. If, if BYU feels it can improve its seeding, you better believe they'll play. And BYU would play in that. I don't see any situation where BYU would opt out. Zero. I, I, don't, I don't personally see it. Coming up. Is Jimmer Mania still alive? Well, it is in my heart, and ESPN thinks so. And radio analyst Mark Durant on if BYU will lose before February 27th against Gonzaga. Can they keep this going? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU faces Pepperdine tomorrow, and BYU TV and BYU Radio have you covered. Pre-game coverage begins at 2 p.m. Eastern on BYU Radio. Yours truly will start things off with Cougar pre-game live. And then Greg Rubel, voice of the Cougars, will have the call for you on BYU Radio. You can watch on BYU TV as we announced earlier in the show. Yeah, and that was a video and a picture of Alex Barcella pre-chipped toot. So we'll see if we can update uh, some of that. He did get it fixed, as we mentioned yesterday on the show, although he didn't get the uh, diamond bling like Mark Pope was hoping for. Okay, uh, he is Jason Shepard. I am Jerem Jordan. Our next guest is a man who played basketball at BYU. He's a radio analyst. He's uh, one of your favorite uh, lawyers out there. His name is Mark Durant on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Mark, uh, you have a filing cabinet behind you. That is a right of a lawyer to have in his office, right? Yeah, they issue that to you once you pass the bar, and you must take it with you at all times and all places. Yeah, and, and all, wow, going scriptural there. This I is, like that. This is awkward because I thought we were talking with Kevin Durant. Uh, <laughs> I've I prepared a lot of questions about Kyrie Irving, so I hope you'll uh, just uh, bear with me. <laughs> Listen, people, if you can believe it, people ask me if I'm related to Kevin Durant. <laughs> I'm like, uh, well, no, no, but Devin, Devin, I am. What, well, yes. as you recall, and I've said before one time to Devin, I asked if he was Mark's brother. So that was the first time that had ever been asked, which is awesome. Okay, so. Yes, we, I, I appreciate that. He needs to be taken down a notch or two, actually. So hey, that's good. I got you. I got you. Um, okay, we were talking about the hypothetical of the West Coast Conference Tournament and it's not a report. It's just an idea that, hey, there might be leagues that say it's not worth it for us to play a conference tournament, although a lot of college basketball has taken place. Yes, there have been postponements. They're rescheduling. I think we've navigated this generally pretty well, uh, but there's always a chance that maybe it doesn't happen, and who knows? What if Gonzaga opted out? Uh, what are your thoughts on the possibility of these things as we don't know what it's going to be like in six weeks? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's hard to know what it's going to be like. But my philosophy for this whole thing is let's look for ways to make it happen rather than ways to cancel things, right? I mean, if you can have a conference tournament, if you can manage the risks and uh, and do it in a safe way, why not have a conference tournament? I mean, that's that's part of the fun of basketball season and a lot of, especially for the players. I mean, that's a big deal. And you go and even the teams that aren't in the NCAA tournament discussion, you know, that's kind of their postseason and a chance to go and be part of that tournament environment. And I don't know all the financial 
uh, aspects of it, the TV and you know how that is affected if you don't have fans and generating that kind of revenue. But just from a, a, a player's perspective and just for the perspective of college basketball, if you can have a conference tournament, do it. Why, why change things if you don't have to? And you can do it in the right way. And, and maybe you make some modifications. And if Gonzaga doesn't want to play, I mean, I, that's up to them. But I, I think if you can do it, find a way to do it because it's a great time and, and a fun experience. And it gives teams a chance to play in that conference environment with just a, a, a sliver of hope that perhaps you might win the tournament and get a bid to the NCAA tournament. So let's do it if we can. You know, whatever Mark Few and the Zags want to do, let's that, that's fine. But let's have a tournament if we possibly can. And just to be clear for those watching, not a report, just an idea that we're putting out there that benefiting Gonzaga or not, right, uh, at that point. So nothing official or even unofficial at this point. Just throwing out an idea. All right, so Mark, you and I have, uh, have the chance to talk during pregame shows. So we get to talk about this a lot, but – Jeremy and I were talking in the last segment just the fact that, that BYU is certainly trending in the right direction to, to really put itself in a very similar spot to where it was last year. And after losing so much production, that just speaks extremely highly of what Coach Pope and his coaches have done. Where do you feel like Coach Pope has made the biggest impact on this program? Well, first of all, I mean, I just love Coach Pope. You guys are around him. What a joy it is to be around him. And I think the players uh, feel that as well. And there's a great locker room and a great environment. They feel like they really care about him. But I think a lot of his success is his ability to recruit, whether that's recruiting guys like Caleb Lohner coming out of high school or, more importantly, I think in today's college basketball, you need to really take advantage of the transfers and and bring in good players. That, that's how a team like BYU and Gonzaga, for instance, can really compete against some of the bigger schools as being a great transfer spot for people. And imagine where this team would be without, uh, you know, Averett and Harms and Harward and, and Barcelo. Go down the list. Those guys are all transfers. And, and I think that's where BYU can get good players, experienced players. You kind of know what you're getting. And uh, Mark Pope is such a, a gregarious, fun, great guy that, you know, he goes into people's homes and those kids b buy into it. And then when they have success, like Gonzaga has had over the years, then people know, in the future know, if I go to BYU, I'm going to have a chance for real success and exposure and to play at the next level. So uh, he's done a lot of great things, but I think his ability to recruit, especially transfers, has been a, a real difference maker early for him. 11 regular season games left. The 11th is Gonzaga. Do you feel like BYU will lose any of the next 10? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sorry, but uh, just practically speaking, I think it's likely they will. I mean, I've just been on the road too many times in conference and, and been snake bitten even at home with this conference. You look at Pepperdine the other night, it looks like BYU's rolling, and then they, they, all of a sudden they're in a game at the end, and that's really been the case in all of the games except Gonzaga, St. Mary's, and San Francisco. BYU was behind in those games in the second half. and uh, That's not to say I don't think BYU will win most of them, but I think they're not such an offensive juggernaut that they're going to be 20, 30 points ahead of people. They're going to be in tight games, right? And you just don't win all of them, even if you're a good team. If, if it's close, sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way. Uh, but with that said, I mean, I think BYU will have a chance to win every game. But I don't know that with the numbers and the, and the, the games will be pretty close that if BYU could, could do that. I hope they do, and that would be an exciting game uh, against Gonzaga to finish up the regular season. The good news, Mark, is the BYU got the win on Saturday, but I, I don't think the Cougars felt like they played their best basketball. I know Pepperdine was not happy with the way neither team shot the ball well, and it's always difficult when you play a team back-to-back, -back, which is actually pretty rare in college basketball. What do you make of part two of BYU versus Pepperdine tomorrow in Malibu? It's hard to play any team twice. That's why the second half of conference play is always harder but particularly back-to-back -back games. I mean, the crazy things happen, as we know, with back-to-back uh, -back, uh, games against the same opponent. It's going to be tough because 
uh, I think you saw a preview with Pepperdine of what the rest of the conference is going to try and do with BYU. I think now they they understand BYU is a, a big, strong inside team, that their three-point shooting is not as good as it was by any means from last year. So Pepperdine, I think, was content to pack in the defense, be very aggressive with the big men, try and push them off the block and, and be very physical and try and take the big men out of the game a little bit and then almost dare BYU to beat them from the three-point line. And they made a couple, but still not didn't shoot great. And so I think that's the that's probably the preview of the scout going forward is to try and take away the inside play for BYU and and and, be, and I don't think people fear BYU particularly from the three-point line. So not just Pepperdine, but going forward as they play teams twice, it's going to be even much more difficult because teams know you and there's good coaches in this league and they'll, they'll try and do things to stop you. So it'll be a challenge for BYU. Alex Barcelo with a, uh, I guess, new look. We'll see how the uh, tooth looks tomorrow. But uh, did you ever chip a tooth when you played, Mark? Uh, no, but that's miserable. I, I've had my share of teeth problems, and I having to play an entire game after having your tooth chipped, that's that doesn't sound fun at all. But I tell you what, one time Ken Roberts cut my eyelid open. I had to get stitches. And the next day I broke his nose. <laughs> so that's the story I would tell everybody, don't mess with me or you're going to get it. And, uh, and so I... I Listen, I expect Alex to do some redistribution of pain next game on Pepperdine. <laughs> on Colby Ross, that'll be a fun matchup. Did you <laughs> did you have stitches on your eyelid? Uh, I maybe misspoke. Uh, eyebrow. Like, okay, like, eyebrow. I was like, like eyelid? Oh, my gosh. That would be painful. Yeah, That's so thin. To, I didn't mean to gross you out, Jerem, but, yeah, I, I eyebrow. Okay, I, okay, that's All nothing. Right. I'm not, it's I, still look, I still look beautiful, though, so it's okay. Yeah, in spite of that, I, th- I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an interesting conversation that we actually want to have on the show, and uh, we're going to kind of preview it with you a little bit. So last year, BYU had clear-cut go-to guys. This year, it's much more about the collective. It's much more about guys versus then maybe the one guy. Which do you prefer? Well, I, I prefer the guys, but even in that scenario, I think you have to have one or two players that are kind of your best guys. Uh, they don't have to be Jimmer, superstar, Yoli guys. But they have to be your best guys that you can rely on to produce every game. And you'd think that's Barcelo and maybe Harms or someone like that or Averett, but what I'd like to see out of those guys is a little more consistency, uh, particularly Alex. Uh, he can change from half to half. Obviously, he's very good. He's been great. But I'd like to see a consistent scoring for him because the other guys on the team have to know where the points are coming from and rely on that. For instance, I compare this team a lot to the teams I played with. It was We had some real strength inside. We were an inside-out team, didn't shoot a ton of three-pointers. Uh, we had bit, a lot of depth and size inside, like Gary Trost, Jared Miller, Russ Larson, Ken Roberts, those guys. So... Uh, but none of those guys were superstars, but we knew, for instance, my senior year, I knew that we were going to get, what, 35 or 40 points every night from Ken and Lynn Russ. And you need to have that base. I mean, those guys were, were awesome, but they weren't like one-man, two-man teams. And, and so I think that's the balance you need. You need guys that will play consistently and get you the points you need as a base and then other, the other guys can kind of fill in around that. I, I, that's, that's what I'd like to see for this team is, is a, a real te- obviously the real team mentality, but clearly a couple guys need to step up and, and be consistent, good performers for you every night so you can count on that. Now the exact opposite of this, uh, of just the guys, was 10 years ago today, BYU defeated San Diego State in the top 10 matchup. Kawhi Leonard and Jimmer Fredette, 43 points from Jimmer. Kevin Durant, your uh, cousin, nephew, tweets, Jimmer Fredette's the greatest scorer in the world. Like, that was such an amazing game, Mark. What do you remember from that that you always uh, always take away? It was just a perfect college basketball. I mean, you have those moments where it's just perfect. And you're at uh, Viejas, and it's packed. And you have some of the best players in the country playing for the highest of stakes. 
and and then your your team performs like you want them to perform. And Jimmer was just magic, and everyone else played great. And uh, you know, I have, there's a handful of those games. I think last year's Gonzaga game at home was one of those, but. It's just perfect college basketball. And uh, after a year like we've had, I mean, I just, I, I hope we have some of those moments coming up because that's, that's what it's all about. And uh, yeah, that's certainly one that I'll always treasure. I remember the night before with my son, uh, just shooting hoops with Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg and, and San Diego's arena, just talking about stuff. I, and then the game, I mean, it was just like, I, I've died and gone to heaven. This is what it's all about. It, it's fun. That's awesome. What a fun memory to uh, hang out with those guys. Okay, Mark, we appreciate the time and uh, safe travels to uh, Malibu through the blizzard tonight. <laughs> Man, I'm not going to Malibu. I don't want any part of Malibu. I, I already went this year and they canceled the game. So Bell's on his own. Yeah, oh, Greg, on Greg, his own. Greg is going solo, but that doesn't oh. mean, Mark, you're off the hook. You're still. We are still going to have our courtside conversation, even though you will probably be doing it from the chair that we're watching you at right now. If you can find me, I'll be on, but I'm not making any guarantees, Jason. Okay. okay. Well, Mark Durant, the only person to complain about Malibu ever. Mark, we appreciate the time. <laughs> See ya. That's Mark Durant on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. So Greg's calling the game by himself. Greg is, Greg is going to call Mark the game solo. Call it from his house. No, Mark is just not going to be on the broadcast. Mark oh, is Mark, Mark is not going to be on the broadcast, but he will still join me during pregame. Um, gotcha. So yeah, Greg is going to be solo for that trip. Mark had enough of canceled flights. Like you know, you know what? <laughs> I just can't deal with the beautiful beaches <laughs> and the sunsets hey, and the palm trees. I just can't. Can't, can't do anything. Can't do any more with anyway. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> enough is enough. It's like, I, I'm going to take a stand here. Yes. All right. Coming up, Zach in black. I was never asked if I wanted to go. I just want to point that out. You, and you did, won't be. And did Jim Romania <laughs> peak 10 years ago today? We'll discuss. This is BYU Sports Day. This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. BYU Women's Basketball hosts Pacific today at the Marriott Center. You can watch the game on the BYU TV app at 4 Eastern time. Here's Jason. I'm Jerem. This is BYU Sports Nation. Let's whip it. Good whip round presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems on this date 10 years ago. Oh, Jim Fredette outscored Kawhi Leonard 43-22. Number 9 BYU beat number 4 San Diego State 71 to 58. It was so awesome. Was this the greatest moment of Jimmer Mania? I believe that it was. And I, I think because, number one, anytime somebody nationally brings up Jimmer, they will always go back to the matchups with Kawhi and San Diego State. They will always. And then everybody will, will usually bring up, you remember that scene on the Marriott Center floor with Jimmer and everybody? And you were there. You were there. I, to me, that is the height of it. I would like to also put in the half-court shot against Utah. That's a personal favorite of mine, but that's that's the moment. Yeah, I think San Diego State was it, and it was the first game, right? There was a second San Diego State game, right. which Mark Durant was talking about, but the first one was incredible. Kevin Durant tweeted, Great, uh, Jimmer Fredette's greatest scorer in the world. I was in the press room when a uh, student reporter brought it up to Jimmer, and he goes, oh, that's cool, you know. But it was such a scene. Yeah, 43 points, top 10 matchup, blowout uh, win, like 13 over a top 10, top five team in San Diego State. There were other moments, right? Beating Gonzaga in the NCAA tournament, Florida losing, but still impressing. That was the peak, though. I think San Diego State 10 years ago. That's the greatest sporting event I've ever been to. It was so fun. All right, let's stick with Jimmer. Sports Center tweeted about Jimmer's 70 point game in China. Is Jimmer Mania still alive and well? I think it's still alive. Um, I, there was a strong reaction to that tweet from Sports right. Center. So I, I think it's still going, and I hadn't thought about that till this morning. Jimmer Mania is still alive. It really yes. is. Until he retires, and it maybe even beyond that, the legend of Jimmer will always be there. He's this sort of mythical figure. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah, I, I agree with you. It, it is still alive. It, it's certainly not to the level that it was. But the fact that SportsCenter took note of what Jimmer did in China. Now, granted, 70 points is 70 points. But it's because it's Jimmer. But Jimmer, look, people loved Jimmer. It was people a love Jimmer. Love, love Jimmer. They love him. But it was a story that just blew up. If you didn't, if you weren't around for it, you cannot truly understand 
how big that story got. And it was not just locally, that was nationally. And the fact that he is still in the, the, the public is, a, is a, first of all, it's a credit to Jimmer, but that is just amazing. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Okay, BYU football signees Elia and Inoka Mingel both posted videos of them squatting 550 and 460 pounds respectively. Jason, are you impressed and can you do this? Uh, yes, I'm impressed. And no, I cannot, nor would I try. You know, you said 550 and 460. Yeah. I might be able to do the 50 and the 60 part. There you go. The only squatting you've done was hanging out at your in-laws before. But other than that, I don't think you could do this. So I know yeah. I couldn't. Okay, so. these guys are an offensive and defensive lineman, respectively, coming into BYU and uh, next season, which is exciting. So strong dudes, man. Little Tijon Karomas coming Absolutely. in. Like, by little, I mean regular or large size. Yes, yeah. exactly. All right, both <laughs> currently ranked first in the nation. Which is more likely to win a national championship this year? Men's volleyball or track and field? In my incredibly biased opinion, men's volleyball. Uh, I do think that cross country is a competitor, but you asked me about track, mm-hmm. specifically indoor track. Uh, that BYU is good at indoor track. They're really good at outdoor track, but the best thing um, is cross, cross country. country yes. So I think it's men's volleyball, but both could. Who knows? Yeah, I'm going to say men's volleyball as well. I, I think, uh, look, that's just what we expect going into the year. <laughs> yeah, I, in fact, if BYU doesn't play for the Natty and if they don't win it, there's going to be some level of disappointment how they played last year, who they have back. Stakes are high, but this team's ready. Let's go. Okay, Mike Littlewood posted an Instagram uh, post that BYU baseball will be installing a video board after the pandemic. Is this a home run? A home run? Oh, uh, well, I see what you did. Yeah, I think it's cool. Um, I've been able to see some renderings of what this is going to look like. It's Thanks for pre- sharing. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, it, this is cool. Number one, it's, it's a fan experience type thing to be able to have a new school board. But look, anytime you can upgrade your facilities, that helps with recruiting. People pay attention to that stuff. Th- this is a big, big deal for the baseball program. Some people are bothered by the timing of it, given all in. It's totally separate. The former players got together and they said, you know what we need to do for BYU baseball? Yes. We need to get a video board. So if you donated all in, that's not for that video board. It's not. It was the former players yes. who got together and said, we need to contribute this. This was donation specifically yes. for that. Yes. And I'm stoked. I think it's it is gonna be indeed awesome. a home run. Yes, it is. All right. Today's the first women's basketball game in 12 days for BYU. Do you expect some rust after not playing for almost two weeks? Naturally. This team's 8-2. and two, Really good. Shaley Gonzalez, Paisley Harding, Lauren Gustin. Lauren Gustin. They're really good. They won 5-6. of six. Uh, The one loss was by two at San Diego. Like you said, they haven't played in, in uh, you know, two and a half weeks. So I expect some rust, but I expect a victory against uh, Pacific, who is a scrappy, defensive-minded team. Coming up on BYU TV app at 4 Eastern. Yeah, I, I expect a little bit of rust. That's just natural. But I also expect a, a pretty determined team. Th- they're tired of not playing. You know what I mean? It's a good thing of being tired. Like That's what I mean. Like they, they they have had opportunities where they've been on the road and haven't been able to play. So they've traveled and haven't yeah. been able to do uh, this team is ready to play. I expect a very, very motivated team today. Like that uh, video of the old man who, who someone comes up to him with a knife and he ducks down. And he's like, oh, oh, call an ambulance. <laughs> and then he comes up. But not for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about 30 minutes ago, the college football playoff committee announced uh, the they are replacing some outgoing members. New members are from Kentucky, North Carolina, uh, or NC State, uh, Texas, Nebraska, and then randomly a dude from Virginia Union. I haven't even heard of that school. So one non-power five, uh, one non-power five committee member. Also, Gary Barta extended as the committee chair because apparently he's good at that. Uh, any red flags here for Brigham? Yeah, there's there's a big red flag. First of all, I I don't know if I want to recognize that committee. It doesn't have Hank Bachmeyer on it, and therefore I don't think it has any validity. <laughs> but Hank Bachmeyer didn't play defense for the committee. Um, well, what's the committee going to be doing for BYU in the future? Hopefully ranking BYU. I you mean, obviously. ranking them based off of where they deserve to be. Obviously. But ranking them with bias. Lower than you wanted and we wanted this year. So red flags, yeah, the whole thing feels like a red flag after this year. <laughs> And red's not our favorite color of flag. No, it is not. Unless it's the Kansas City Unless Chiefs. Unless it's the Kansas City Chiefs or my St. Louis Cardinals. Those are the only two exceptions for me. How much red me. in your life? Mm, nah, not as much as you think. I always find the other colors they wear to wear. Nice. All right, coming up, top five plays from the 2011 BYU versus San Diego State edition. Okay, better fit for Zach Wilson as well. Jets or Falcons? We'll discuss. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 
Join us Thursday for BYU basketball with Mark Pope as the coach. Greg Rubel look back on the game uh, at Pepperdine and then preview Saturday's matchup with USF. Plus, you can watch brand new Deep Blue with Matt Harms. It's Thursday, 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Yeah, rescheduling's fun. Thursday night, and then we'll go Monday night as well. So let's go. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B in Provo. Great to have you. Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard here. Zach Wilson and the NFL Draft. News uh, plenty. This morning, Mel Kuyper of ESPN released his first mock draft. Big deal since he's the guy with uh, the NFL mock draft. And he has Zach Wilson going to the Falcons at number four. So we've seen multiple projections uh, from different sources. His guy, Todd McShay, also had Zach going forth to a couple weeks ago, remember? To the Falcons. To the Falcons, yes. Yes. So that's an option, right? Uh, Jets at two has been uh, one that's discussed as well. So let's let's discuss what you think is a better fit, knowing who what we know about those two teams and coaching staffs. Two to the Jets or four to the Falcons? Okay. As of today, I would rather have him go to the Falcons. Now, I understand the Falcons, since falling apart in the Super Bowl, have, have been a shell of themselves. But they are certainly going to need a quarterback with Matt Ryan being his age. Um, I, I like... I like the organization overall. They have a steady ownership. You know, overall, they've been very good in terms new stadium. of... Yeah, new stadium. Yeah. Like it's, it's a good franchise to go to. But, but the problem is, look, the Jets, we know what the Jets have been. So we're basing them not wanting to go to the Jets based off of them being a laughing stock the last couple of years. That last couple of years. Adam Gase was fired. They have a new I love Robert Sala, yep. the defensive coordinator of the 49ers being their head coach. I love that. I love that he brought in as it's Mike LaFleur, correct? Yes, yes. As the offensive coordinator. So you're getting a guy that was working with the San Francisco 49ers offense. I, I think it's unfair to say that the Jets will always be the Jets. If the Jets turn out to be the right... the Browns weren't always the Browns. Exactly. So, so if you're asking me today, based off of what we've seen over the last year or two, it's Atlanta. But I like the hiring of Salah and LaFleur coming in as the offensive coordinator. And so I, I just don't know if the Jets will stay at the bottom like they have been. They're, they're, they're in New York, so there's always a pressure to be good. So I, I don't want to dismiss. I want him to go to the best fit, wherever that will be, and for him to have the opportunity to succeed. That, that's where I want him to go. Even if it's the Jets, because long-term they're going to have more success, then I'm okay with that. But if you ask me today, based off of the last two years, it's obviously Atlanta. Yeah, I'm cool with either for the reasons you mentioned. The Jets have a new coaching staff, uh, one that's fresh, one that's a little upgraded, obviously, from from the struggles they had this year in the last couple of years. Falcons, uh, it, obviously, they're you know in a new coaching situation as well, uh, firing Dan Quinn, uh, you know, who was the DC on that amazing Seahawks defense that just blasted the Broncos. But that era is over, so n- now we go to that situation. Atlanta is more ready of an offense for uh, for a guy like Zach Wilson, and obviously uh, having Julio Jones and like Calvin Ridley, who is weapons, who is aging yes, though. He'll be thirty two, so he's kind of at the end of his his career. And didn't and they hired the Titans' offensive coordinator? Is that correct? I can't remember. Who I, they I can't, hired, re- but I, yeah, I can't. I think that's who they hired. They're, they're, but an offense, I'm, I'm almost more, positive it was an offensive coach that they they're, hired. They're more ready now to to and, and if. If Zach gets uh, drafted by the Falcons, he's not the starter right away. Matt Ryan's going to have a year at right. least as the guy. As the guy, an skill, opportunity to learn at least, if not a little longer. But if you get a guy at four, you're wanting to put him in sooner than later, obviously. But I would love that that mentorship there. If if Zach goes to the Jets, Sam Darnold is returning. There would be a competition there. Sam probably gets the start initially, but then Zach comes in once the Jets stink inevitably um, <laughs> and during the season. So it, it's. I would rather him go to the Falcons so that it's not a uh, David Carr situation where he's thrown in uh, with the Wolves and sacked too much and whatever. Also, the weather situation, I think it's it's easier to be an effective passer in the division, uh, what, the NF- NFC South? Yeah. Uh, than, than the uh, Because you're going AFC to Florida. East. You're inside at New Orleans. Right. Yeah. And Patriots aren't the, uh, you know, the dominant team they have been, so that division is open. A but, divisional battle between the- Taysom and Zach? That'd be fun, right? <laughs> and, but the Bills have emerged. Bills are pretty good. Those are pretty good. So I think they're going to be good for a couple of years. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. Falcons, let's go. Okay, uh, what's coming up, Jeff? All right, uh, a rise and shout out to the Black Mamba. Okay, and top five Tuesday. Ten years ago today, San Diego State, BYU at home. Oh, we got the top five plays for you. Nostalgia, a plenty. Jimmer, oh, after the break. This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by 
Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. BYU Sports Nation's Rising Shoutout is presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. BYU Sports Nation always on demand via the BYU TV and BYU Radio app. Or you can download the podcast. All you need to do is Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Time for Top 5 Tuesday presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Ten years ago today, Jim Romania and the Brighamites beat Kawhi Leonard and fourth-ranked San Diego State. The Cougars ranked ninth in the Marriott Center. So we look back on the top five plays from that magical night. Number five, Jimmer with the crossover. Look at this. Look at you. Oh, the crossover. Breaking ankles. Finishes over Malcolm Thomas with the left hand. Oh, this was such a wonderful night. Oh, look, that look is beautiful. Look how packed the Merritt Center is. The students were over in the center. Takes over there. the contact and still gets the bucket. Number four, Charles Abu blocks Malcolm Thomas from behind. Fun fact. Charles Buell didn't get credit for this block. I think James Anderson did, who had five on the night. But Charles Abuo <laughs> was all over it defensively. Abuo didn't make a shot from the field, but defensively was fantastic. All right, number three, speaking of defense, how about one of BYU's best defensive players ever, Jackson Emery, intercepting the pass, takes it the other way for the two-handed dunk. Look at Jackson with the ups. Again, Jackson only had four points in this game. Brandon Davies was the only other Cougar that – Scored in double figures with 14, but defensively, BYU was so good, held a top five team to 58 points. And Jack's the all time steals leader with another one. Okay, number two, Jimmer Fredette crosses over Billy White and makes a three. I was on the opposite baseline. We have chosen not to use my angle of this, <laughs> but it was an amazing shot. 25 24, uh, three pointer in the first half. Crowd going crazy. Five made threes by Jimmer, and woo, he got shook. All right, that brings us to number one with the shot clock at three. Jimmer pulls up from deep. We like to call it Jimmer range and drains it. Look at that. BYU goes on top 50-46 in the second half. He like jumps and then kind of kicks his feet a little bit for a little more juice from that distance. Oh, I mean, that's, yeah, that's in the second half and every posi- possession was contested. And oh, by the way, look who's on him defensively. By the way, Jimmer was ahead of his time. What are they doing in the NBA now? Taking deep threes in its routine. Jimmer was doing this 10 years ago. I have deep thoughts about this that I'm not going to share right now. Those are the top five plays from the magical night in the Marriott Center 10 years ago between San Diego State and BYU. Last year, prior to the Gonzaga game at home, I said, this is going to feel like the closest thing since that game. And it totally was, right? It was unbelievable. And BYU did an amazing thing. I still feel like that game was a little, just a li- they're both amazing, just a little better than the Gonzaga game. Both were incredible. Both were court storms. So fun. Uh, BYU being a top team itself, and top 10 team in Jimmer Mania kind of pushes it over the edge. But some incredible nights. So fun. Okay, our question of the day, hypothetical question. If Gonzaga were to opt out of the West Coast Conference Tournament, would it be worth it for BYU to play in the tourney? Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at WD Heath 40. Of course, since Gonzaga and BYU will both only have one conference loss going into the tournament. Oh, I see what they did there. Nice. That means BYU will beat Gonzaga. Yes. Yes. It'll be an opportunity to go claim the title and be undisputed champs. Well, it would be disputed if Gonzaga was out. But yes. Yeah, but hey, they chose not to be there. You can only, hey, you can only play true. the schedule in front of you. Hey, that's true. BYU football 2020. That's what I'm saying. Just have a schedule, play <laughs> it, and win a bunch. Uh, all, right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. Today is the one-year anniversary of the death, not only of Kobe Bryant, but his daughter Gianna and everybody on the helicopter uh, that crashed in Calabasas, California. Uh, I'm going to give my Rise and Shoutout to, to that group, and obviously Kobe um, is going to get most of the attention today. But um, I happened to be in L.A. that day. I tweeted this out this morning. I had taken my girls to a, a quick trip to Disneyland. So I was there and got the news checking into the hotel, and it really affected me a lot more than I expected. Um, and uh, so one year ago today, so we're going to give a rise and shout-out to Kobe, Gianna, and everybody on the helicopter. Yeah, I can't believe it's been a year. Um, and it's been an insane year, obviously, with the pandemic and uh, before that, Kobe and, and Gianna and everybody. So my rise shout out goes to uh, Jim Romania. Still alive. Scored 70 in China, getting sports center treatment. Pretty crazy, right? But thanks to today's guest, Mark Durant. Not Kevin Durant. 
Although, maybe related. May, perhaps. Maybe. Maybe he doesn't even know. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Chelsea Goodman. Watch Women's Hoops play Pacific today for Eastern on the BYU TV app. Go Cougs. Look at Jimmer. He's draining it from deep.